There is no preset path for policy. We will be patient as we watch to see how the economy evolves. Fed Chair Jerome Powell, those comments sent the market soaring on Friday uh, when he said the Fed's going to be patient and flexible uh, with respect to raising rates. And while the U.S. economy has rarely looked better, uh, particularly against this global market sell-off, uh, the market is still concerned that the, the Fed could blow it. And here's the thing. Uh, it's, it's not just the rates, right? The idea that the Federal Reserve can engineer what they call a soft landing, because every time they've tried it, according to most experts, they've actually sent this crashing into recession. Joining me now to discuss uh, the chief economist for Peyton and Regal, Jeffrey Cleveland. Dennis Gartman's back with us as well. Jeffrey, let me start with you. How confident are you that the, the Federal Reserve will be able to do that, be able to sort of manage <laughs> slowing economic growth in America, Raising rates, um, you know, not interrupting the jobs picture that we have and not pushing us into a recession because they know that they've done this. Ralph Bostic, in fact, put out a presentation where he admitted as much, but they're going for it anyway. Well, I thought Bernanke's comments on that panel on Friday, Charles, were the best. He said the cycle ends not due to old age, but because it's murdered. And the murderer in this case is generally the central bank. Uh, but I think fears of the central bank stopping the cycle, Charles, are, are really overdone here. And one way to look at that, I think, for viewers is to look at the real Fed funds rate. So the actual Fed funds rate accounting for inflation, it's still just above zero, very low. And typically, at least historically, you need a much higher level for a real Fed funds rate for the Fed to really trip up the economy. The second thing I will say is it's not just the Fed that kills the cycle. You need to have a sector where you have a large imbalance. Last time around, as I'm sure you remember, the housing sector. This time around, the housing sector, the households are in much better shape. We look at household debt to disposable income. That looks fantastic compared to 10 years ago or even 20 years ago. So I think the U.S. economy is in much better shape, not only to withstand higher rates, but also to continue to grow out into next year, breaking right. the record for the longest cycle. Uh, Dennis, you know, the one wild yeah. card, though, is removing accommodation, $50 billion every single month. Yeah. The Fed has never done this before. It's an experiment. Now, of course, when you're, when you're, when you're buying $50 billion worth of toxic debt and treasuries and whatever else they bought, uh, that was pretty easy for them to create $4.5 trillion from thin air. It's going to be a lot bigger, a lot more difficult uh, trick, I think, to, to, to dispose of that. I, I could not agree more, Charles. That, it will, that will be their problem. That will be their difficult task to, to accommodate. And, and I do have my doubts as to whether they can do it. The problem that you have is that the staff is, is an old Phillips Curvian type of uh, circumstance. They actually believe that uh, the, the tightness of, of, uh, of uh, labor in the United States is inflationary, when in fact it's been deflationary for a long period of time. They forget the fact that we are so much more productive than we have been. My fear is that the Fed will not do what Mr. Powell intimated that he will do and that, you know, on Friday when he said that he'll probably take a slower uh, uh, path towards uh, reducing that, uh, that $50 billion so you, you a think month and maybe go paying, to zero. you think he might have been paying Wall Street lip service, understanding, uh, you know, how, uh, how the market was selling off? It is possible. Off? Really? It uh, is possible. Jeffrey, what are your thoughts? That, uh, Charles, I think this quantitative tightening story, QT, is the most overhyped issue in the markets right now. Think about what the He's Fed wrong. is doing. They are not reinvesting the proceeds back into treasuries and agencies, which are the most liquid securities on the face of the earth. This is not tightening monetary conditions at all. In fact, I would argue, Charles, it's helping monetary conditions because you're getting but good the, quality the collateral then, back the, into the market. The argument, I will, then, I Jeff, take the, uh, go ahead, Dennis, take the other side then. I will take the absolute <laughs> other side. You have taken the you have taken what fifty billion dollars of money out of the system on the course of the uh, for the past since actually since middle of nineteen uh, twenty fifteen they they were continually doing that. That is reducing the amount of reserves into the system. It's as if you've taken your foot off the gas pedal and you have given less fuel to the economy and less fuel to the stock market. So I will take the opposite view. I think this has been very dangerous. I hope that they're going to stop doing it. I hope that they will reinvest those funds. And I hope that they, they take a more patient perspective than they have in the past. Gentlemen, we've got to leave it there. The only thing I would say, if it was so inconsequential, why'd they do it in the first place? But we'll bring you both back real soon. Because i got a feeling we'll have this conversation again. Thank you both very much, Jeffrey and Dennis.